bring her a little bit closer, is I went in and I went ahead and did half of her head so you guys can see exactly what's going on. So remember, this is her dark that we did yesterday and she's feeling a little dark. So I'm like, okay, cool deal. Let's pop a partial balayage on you and brighten you back up because she loves the red tone, but she just feels like it doesn't have any dimension. She's used to her normal dimension and her natural beautiful hair, correct? So we're gonna go in and I'm going to show you guys how I did this. I like really bright pops of color around the face, so that's what I did right here. And then really natural on top. Now I did make her super vibrant. And what I'm going to do on the other side is I don't want to make her as vibrant as I did on this side. See how I did really bright pieces right here? I'm gonna turn her. So these really bright pieces right here, but then if I turn her all the way around, I didn't do them in the back on the underside. So she's got it right here, but not like right here in the nape area. And so what I'm gonna do on the other side, just to show you guys the difference so you can do more of this section or you can do less. I'm gonna do less. That way you can choose which is best for your client. Sometimes they want more dimension and sometimes they like it really blended. So go ahead and get her sectioned real fast since we've got our product all mixed up now. And again, what I used today was our Ultimate Blonde Cream Lightener, which is super creamy and dreamy. I love this stuff for balayaging. You will too, I hope you give it a try. And it just really makes the hair lift really gently with a super great conditioning quality, which I love. So get her out of the way, because we've already colored that side, obviously. And then, this is a really easy sectioning. So we've got her in half, make sure. Turn her this way. Okay, can you guys see? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you can see her really good. Make sure the lighting and everything is good right there. So really, this sectioning is super simple. All you're going to do is just take these pieces around her hairline out. You can go all the way back. To this nape area right here. We're going to drop all that out. So go ahead and get this out of the way. And then I just really like to go ahead and just braid this sometimes just to make my sections a little bit cleaner. Just a little braid. Pop a clip on there and then keep going. So this next section, all it's going to be is we're going to make a kind of a triangle in a way, but you're gonna start really shallow right here and you're gonna get deeper. And then as you get deeper, you're gonna keep going to the back in the crown. So it's more of a curved triangle, if that makes sense, kind of like a half moon triangle shape right there. And then we're going to get this top section just out of the way for us. And also just drop this section back here. I will post pictures of this sectioning later for you guys so you can pop back on here. That way you don't have to go through the video and you can just see the sections in the comments later. So there's that show that for you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining me today. I know you guys are really busy in the salon. So these are our three sections that we're going to be working with. Can you guys see all that? So a thin section right there to the thick in the back and then this kind of curves right on the top. And so what we'll be doing is on her, I did that all over formula she wanted some brightness, so we balayaged with the 20 volume. And then I went back with one of our sands, and I actually went and used the Ruskin 10. Have you guys used the Ruskin 10 yet? Give me a heart if you used it, because I want to see how many guys have used it. This is the 8S that I used on her to tone her and everything. And I did the 
Zero Lift Developer. So 8S and Zero Lift Developer, one to two. So what you'll do is go ahead and drop your bottom section out of the way. Let's clip her a little bit higher up. And I'll go ahead and clip this back section out of the way. We're gonna do that second. So I love to do these really bright pieces in the front. A lot of people I've noticed with balayages, they really want these vibrant pieces right around their faces and they want them to be really even. I don't know if a lot of your clients have said that to you or not. So what I do is I go ahead and I do a few pieces in a couple of places right around the face. I do like a two, two, two. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a little bit of this and put it back. And so with that, I then go ahead and get that top section out of the way. So I coat this. This is my first little balayage section. This is gonna be those really vibrant pieces you saw coming off of the face. So let me go ahead and I also like to use film. So this is the film that I use. I'm not using foil. That way you guys can really see everything that I'm working with. All right, let's get a move in. So here's the creamy lightener. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the bottom first and just really be light with it. This is super creamy and dreamy, like I said, so it spreads really nice, almost like butter. If you like butter or maybe icing, more of like a texture like icing. So we've got her top going and then it's going to get the, well, I'm sorry, the bottom and then the top. If that happens, because sometimes you get a little crazy, just smudge that. It's not going to hurt it. I love these big brushes. It's almost like a paintbrush. It really helps me load it up and move quickly, especially for these partial balayages. Get those ends covered. And then we're going to place. trying to get it to where she has some on this side where I can wrap it up in that section by itself. I'm going to drop that other section on top of it and almost use the film in a way. So while I was working with that, I got some of the product off of there. You always want to make sure it's like a consistency of in between like a yogurt and an icing that you're looking for. So it's like a nice consistency. Because if you don't get enough product on there as you're balayaging, you might not get enough lift like you want. Now remember, she is a seven and a half, eight underneath here, so, and I did only use Zero Lift Developer when I did her hair color, so she really doesn't need a lot, but she is also a mannequin. If this was real time in the salon, I would probably use just 10 volume to do this. But since she's a mannequin, we wanna make sure she lifts so you guys can see so load up your brush. When you load up your brush, I put it all on the tip like that. That way I can do my detail work. And I'm turning my brush almost at a 45 degree angle into the hair. And just lightly painting and lightly painting. So as you're doing this, you'll see where you need to load more product on and you're just gonna keep going. What I do is I do V's all throughout these sections that I drop down, super easy to remember. Some of them I take really thick on the sides and some of them I take thin. So since we're doing this a little bit lighter and more natural, not lighter, but as in more blended and more natural, we're gonna go ahead and do it lighter on the edges, not heavy V's. So then I like to saturate my ends. I'll go ahead and put my palm underneath and then I'll check the underside. This is where I go ahead and do another little small V just right on the tips. And then I pull it back down and I place it on top of that film. 
Can you guys see that okay? Awesome. Where are you guys from? Where are you joining in from today? So I'm getting this film going at tears. Then placing this right on top and just moving on. This makes this technique super fast and easy. So then we have this back section. So what I did on the other side is I did what I did in the front, like around the face. But instead, I want this to look more blended and natural, so I'm not going to do the underside on this side. But just, just for fun and giggles, I'll go ahead and show you what I did. Just a little weave right there. You see how I did all that pulled away? Hello, Orlando, Scottsdale. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks, Michelle and Lisa. Appreciate you guys. So, yes, you just weave that out, and you would color that just like I did that front. But I'm not going to do that because I want to show you guys the difference when we post the afters later. Okay, so pull your piece. Now, the biggest thing I can tell you when you're coloring for your balayage Use tension. So if you don't have a lot of tension, you get buckles, your hair's not nice and taut, and your your uh, detail work that you're putting in there with your brush isn't going to show up very well. So always make sure you have great tension. If your client likes to be like this and move with you, tell them to give you resistance. Because sometimes I have to be like, hey, you're moving with me, you got to move against me or your balayage is going to be really blurry and I want it to be bright and beautiful. So give me some resistance. So once you tell them that, They'll give you some resistance. They don't want their hair color to be messed up, I promise. So load up your brush again. I get the tip of it. Can you guys see that product, how I just line it up? And then we're doing the V. Now, be careful not to push too hard. That's why I like to load the edge of the brush up and just be really gentle. You can see I'm using a lot of tension so I have a really flat palette to work with. And I'm just lightly putting that product on the hair. And when I lightly paint it in the center of this just to blend and blur the lines some, I'm not putting as much product as I am on the sides where the V is. And then I keep my tension really taut and I just keep moving down. And then once I get here and I just have these, the ends in my hands, I flip it up and check the underside and see a little product went through there. So that's where I'll bring my V up to. Just to make sure you're constantly turning your brush in your hands. You can see how I'm not, not doing it flat. I'm constantly doing at an angle and turning it. Are you guys doing a lot of balayage techniques in the salon right now? I know it's been super popular. So there's the bottom section. It's completely done. Then the middle section when we drop it is only going to have one piece that we balayage. So really simple. Just do that. I love the film so you can see exactly where you, you are placing all of your pieces of your hair. So this next one, grab it, take this. That's our next section, our middle. Again, it has a thinner section up here and it's thick back here. So what I want you to think of is you're kind of going to go in with a half moon shape. You're gonna drop out right here above this piece, but you're gonna start more in the back, in the crown area. So back here, drop your moon and go up. There we go, okay. Can you guys see that? So there's that curve of the top section that we haven't done yet. And this is the middle. And then I just have this curved shape right here. 
So what you do with this is you go ahead and section this out of the way, get you a couple of your clippies ready, and then you're going to grab some film. This is how you're going to section that piece of hair that's underneath here out of the way so you don't get any product on it. So go ahead and do that and then pop your other clip over there just so we're nice and covered and then drop your section on top of that so you're good to go. So then you're going to grab this whole section Use your tension. I usually grab in the middle of the hair. Load up your brush. Do your V. Got a little too much product right there. There we go. So be really gentle on moving that around. This one I'm going to do a little bit of a thicker V just because this is the only section we're doing in the middle, in the second section. thicker on the side. There we go. Awesome. So just about there, we're going to check the underside. Again, looks like we just need to coat the side a little bit. Can load up the brush. Just get the ends. Okay, so then we just cover that one up and we move on to our top section. So as we're moving on, I'm so glad that you guys have joined me today and I hope you guys are loving Rusk. Rusk is just a fantastic company. I fell in love with their color because I love their directs. They're so conditioning and just beautiful. Now, Rusk, we believe that professional, reliable product performance and results combined with affordability is a right, not a privilege. That's pretty cool, right? Have you guys noticed that, you know, our products are pretty affordable, they're easy to keep up with, there's a lot more in the tube. When I switched from my other hair care line, when I was training to be a Rusk educator, I noticed that. I thought that was super cool that I was able to get a little bit more bang for my buck, but I was still getting beautiful, reliable results. Okay, as we're moving forward, I'm going to drop this section right here, the another half moon shape in a way. Let's see if I can turn here without smushing. Okay, there we go. So another half moon shape. Now, if you wanted to have a lot more color, you would go ahead and balayage this piece. But since we're making it more natural, I'm just going to drop this one. So there was two sections that I didn't do in this one that I did in the other one. It was the one in the nape area down here, and then this one. So we're gonna drop it out, and then I'm just going to do the section on top of it. And so everything else is the same, except for those two that I'm leaving out so we can see the difference between a really heavier one and just a lighter, brighter, blendier one. So go ahead and get your clips ready. Get that out of the way. Drop your section. So then this is what I like to do with the top section, just because I like to eyeball how the light's gonna pass through. So we can see right here that a lot of light is going to pass through this right here. This is just because she has a lot less density up here and she has more density back here. So what I would do with this section just because of that is I would start my half moon. So here's where she feels about right here. She starts getting really thick density. So I'm going to go ahead and start my half moon right there. ahead and get a little bit deeper with that and then I'm gonna go ahead and pull that and just kind of pop it around that looks great because we want that color to pop through that last half moon this isn't gonna get colored at all so we're gonna pop that out of the way and balayage this last section 
And these are thick sections that I'm taking. The reason that is is because I'm not letting the product saturate fully through. So all of this is still have the depth and then the top is going to have the lightness and brightness. I, when I was learning balayage and we're constantly learning and growing, my favorite saying is that you know, we don't make dis I mean, we don't make mistakes in life, we only make discoveries. We just discover how to do better and not do what we did again, right? So only discoveries, guys. We just discover how to do better. So what I used to do with my balayage is I noticed I was taking a lot of really small sections and I couldn't see my my work that I was doing. I felt like I was doing a lot of detailed stuff. But it just wasn't showing up how I thought it should have. So I'm going to show you a little trick right here because this does have a lot of density and I want that to pop a lot brightness through here. We're Instead of doing just a V, we're going to kick it and do a slight another shape right there on that heavy part. I did this on the other side as well just because she has thicker hair right there. We want that to pop through the top section. So then just blend that, blur the line there. So when I was taking those really small sections, it just looked like I did highlights. It didn't look like I was doing anything different. I looked like I was just doing highlights and I wanted it to look like I was doing balayage. And so I learned you have to take thicker sections sometimes in order for it to have, you know, a lot more detail. And I do love our Ultimate Blonde Cream Lightener. Like I said, it's creamy and dreamy. It really is a great balayage tool. So here is our last little bit, coating those ends. And I also wanna show you one last little trick before we pop off of here. Cause this is something fun that you can do for every section if you want, but I usually just do it on this top section, especially since I did it a little bit heavier. So before I drop that down, I leave my hand underneath this section. I grab my highlighting comb, and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find the pockets is what I call them. So here's a pocket right here, pull that. Here's a pocket right here, pull that. Here's a pocket right here, pull. There's a pocket, there's a pocket, there's a pocket. So essentially, what did I just do? I just created a little more like blended depth there's not product going through in those pockets and that product is just sitting on top of the hair so then I drop that that was our ultimate blonde cream lightener in 20 volume and so I let this process for about 20 25 minutes just because she was light underneath and if this was a client and not a mannequin I would probably just use 10 volume to lift her and letting her sit after the fact, we would wash her. And my favorite, favorite shampoo right now, especially for my brighter clients, my direct colors, my fantasy colors, is this new fresh pomegranate. Have you guys seen this and smelled it? Here's the, those two. They're pretty awesome. They also have... A color protecting hairspray. Oh, hello. Sorry, grab her real fast. Trying to move her out of the way. Show you guys this. So, this is the only color protecting hairspray that I know of. Which, if you caught my live yesterday on Aquaja's Facebook page, I talked about how it only takes five minutes out in the sun for your hair color to be affected. So, you've got to protect it. Anything you put on there is going to be a layer. Protection from all the UVA, UVB rays that are coming down on you constantly. And we are out in the sun a lot in the summertime. I am, and I constantly don't want my hair color to fade, so I'm using things like this. This does have a little bit of sunscreen in it. It also is ultra, ultra light. It's a really brushable hairspray. Color protecting. You've got to try it if you have hair color because we're all outside more than five minutes a day. And again, what I toned her with was an 8S in our Ruskin 10. If you guys haven't tried our Ruskin 10 color, it's amazing. It covers gray in 10 minutes flat. You mix it one to two with our dedicated 20 volume 
If you have some really resistant people, you can do one to one with 20 volume or you can go ahead and just use 10 volume. We do recommend, because it is like an American numbering system, so it's lighter, brighter. It's similar to our NL series in our Ross Deep Shine color series. So if you're wanting it to be like your natural cool series or your natural warm, you need to drop a level. So if you're used to the NL and the lightness and brightness, it's going to be okay because that is an American numbering system. It's lighter and brighter. But if you're used to the European number system, which is darker, uh, you definitely want to go ahead and drop a level. And those resistant people, just do one-to-one -one and even do 10 volume if you need to. It's not going to hurt anything. So we did that again, the cream lightener. Also, I wanted to talk to you guys about, we do have... Uh, if you buy six Deep Shine colors, you're going to receive a free choice of gloss developers. Or not gloss developers, gloss toner. So, uh, if you guys haven't used those, we do have the sand in the glosses as well. So, we have the 6S, the 7S, and 8S. Those are fantastic tools when you're doing color corrections. Now, why do I say that? The reason that is is because they do have a little bit of gold in them, but they also have violet. So it controls the hair really well if you're needing to do like a filling type situation or even just add tone. It, if you have ash colors, ash colors are actually darker and don't reflect as much light as the warmer, brighter, honeyer colors. So the sand colors are fantastic if your clients are needing a lot of lightness and brightness, but they're okay with a neutral tone because it's beautiful. So again, you can buy six of our Deep Shine colors, our permanent colors, and you can receive a free choice of your, your gloss toners. You can also, this month in June, you can get Color Boost Conditioners. This color that I did today would be fantastic with our beige, cool blonde, or, or I'm not, I'm sorry, just our beige. The beige uh, color boost conditioner. It is awesome. It literally will tone the hair and you can tell your clients to take it home with them. Use it once a week. It keeps it nice and vibrant. I cannot keep the cool blonde one on my shelf. All my icy blonde ladies love it. Because if you think about it, purple shampoo opens the cuticle constantly. So when your cuticles open, you're putting purple shampoo in there. It's kind of like a running factor, just like a, like a water mill, kind of just getting water and then dumping it, getting water and dumping it constantly. Whereas conditioner, conditioner is made to where it closes the cuticle back down. So with our deep shine conditioners, those are fantastic because as you're closing the cuticle down, you're putting that pigment in there and getting rid of the yellow tones with the cool blonde. And then the beige is enhancing those sandy tones and everything. So. I hope you guys enjoyed the class today. I'm going to post these afters later after she sits for another 20 minutes. And I also am so glad you were able to join me today on your busy Friday. And I hope you guys are enjoying the Rusk products. If you have any questions, please shoot them below. We're all here to help you guys on the Rusk page. You can also go over to the Rusk stylist chat page where you are all on there helping each other. You can post your work, you can ask questions, and all the educators from Rusk are on there to help each other. Again, I'm Allie Carlson. I'm from Wichita Falls, Texas. And thanks for joining me today. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend and stay busy out there. See you guys soon.